Hello and welcome to Rising Stars here on BTVI. I'm Vikram Oza. Now, earlier this year, the company we're featuring on the show today came out with a white paper about e-gifting transactions, which they claim have grown uh, threefold in the last three years. And if that is correct, then we're wondering why more startups aren't jumping in. Is it because Quicksilver has captured 90% of the 3,000 crore rupee market, as they claim? Well, with the backing of an Amazon, among others, Quicksilver is one of the few providers of end-to-end -end solutions in that space that helps uh, brands and retailers and consumers alike. Kumar Sudarshan is the CEO and uh, co-founder of uh, Quicksilver, and he's our rising star today. Great to have you with us. So, Thank where you do you start? Now, this is 10 years old, right? This entire enterprise. Well, it's more uh, than 10 years old. Yeah, absolutely. So, we formally established this company sometime in November of uh, 2006. Uh, at the time, it was just a passion to create a product out of India and take it to market. And, uh, you know, it's a bunch of uh, Bits guys along with me, Baskar, a very close friend of mine, and Pratap, again yeah. from Bits. So but no, but when you started, right? obviously, there was a lot of action in markets outside of India when it came to the gifting space, the gift card space. Right. Uh, there was a model that was established over there, but mm -hmm. not so much here in India. So the starting right. point uh, was a good point because you were capturing a market uh, that hadn't been tapped in the gift card space. But yet you saw potential over there and then you decided to create your own tech product. Why did you decide to go that route? So a couple of things. Uh, one is, of course, around that time, if you look at it, the organized retail was going to be the next big boom in India. So we were looking at products and IP that we can create out of India uh, that could cater to the segment and the gift card seemed a very interesting space that we could take it to the retailers because ultimately gift cards is all about driving more customer acquisition to the retailers so that's that's why we felt there's a right product for the market at that point in time and when we looked at you know bringing in products outside India to cater to the Indian requirement we felt that they will not directly fit in because there are local needs of these products which uh, you know this international products may not cater to and secondly this is going to be a market creation exercise some of these players internationally they were not going to be excited about creating a whole new market sure, sure. so we felt uh, but then you know, how did you go about building the network because that must have been the biggest challenge to get people on absolutely. board to start uh, using gift cards uh, retailers and brands how uh, tough was that it was indeed a tough exercise initially. The good part in India, we feel, is that uh, most people we talk to being in the retail community are very nice, so we could actually get lots of meetings going. Mm -hmm. But the challenge really was being able to bring this concept to India because there were some large retailers who did have paper vouchers. Now, we were talking to them about technology-driven gift cards, about e-gift cards, and, you know, initially it was tough. And a bunch of us who started this were all technology guys. We were not <laughs> marketing guys. So, um, so we tried putting together certain presentations and stuff you know we right. felt that's not the way to go about it mm -hmm. so some of the nice things we did was we actually brought in gift cards from the US some of our friends sent it to us so we started using that as you know while explaining to the retailers how these cards work and you know we started getting images and imagery from these other countries so I think that helped a lot so uh, and people were very able to quickly relate to what this all means to them right, right. Uh, but still, uh, you know, it was a challenge because what we were proposing was a complete new product and we were going to offer it as SaaS. I mean, SaaS was unknown those days. Correct. We said, we will host it, we'll manage everything for you. It was all about their currency. A right. gift card is their prepaid money. Yeah. So there was a bunch of challenges that we had to get Absolutely. over. Absolutely. So you and, kind of you know, did that and yeah. uh, then you created a business model that would work and Absolutely. that is uh, still work in progress, I would imagine. But uh, do yeah. tell us, now, where does it stand right now, the business model, the revenues that you've created? Because obviously a part of it is managing for others. Right. And then, of course, uh, you're part of the distribution game as well. Absolutely. So that uh, gift cards become uh, that much more uh, immediate currency when Absolutely. it comes to gifting. Absolutely. So as far as these two constituents of uh, your business are concerned, uh, what is the ratio at which it works and how are you building it? Sure. So initially our challenge was, like you rightly said, about creating these gift cards, right? So there were no gift cards in the market. So we lit literally invested our first six years of our journey in really creating gift cards for almost every retailer out there, both the online as well as the offline, right? Today we power gift cards for almost all the retailers, almost like 90% of all mm. retail gift cards are with us, right? And then about four years back we said, you know, let's also help facilitate more and more sales of these gift cards. Mm -hmm. That's how we created our distribution business. But is it Currently, because the retailers weren't able to do it themselves? Because why did you need to jump into the distribution considering uh, that you were creating the tech uh, piece for them? Sure, it's not that the retailers weren't able to do that, but we felt even there we can 
actually do a lot of disruption with the technology behind it okay. because uh, the people who were trying to sell it at that point in time were still trying to sell it like a typical paper voucher. Mm -hmm. We thought with our technology and the power behind the gift card, just to give an example, the uh, gift cards, you can load any value that you want to. Right. It doesn't have to be a fixed value, whereas most distribution at that point in time were all fixed values. Right. And second, this whole digital gift cards, you know, mm -hmm. so that opened up the market enormously for us right. because traditionally logistics is a challenge, you know, sending it out. Tell right. me about the revenue model as well, uh, uh, Kumar, because uh, obviously uh, trying to understand the gift card business, how it actually works. Uh, this is essentially on a commission basis, right, that you work with, with brands and retailers, and that I understand is in the range of 1 to 5 percent uh, commission. Is that the industry norm, and how has that changed since the time that you came in? So, so it really depends on the scope of services that we work on. The model that we chose on, the way we worked with the retailers, we said we'll partner with them, right? Mm -hmm. So we make money only when the sales happen. Okay. Otherwise, we don't make money. So that's the kind of a model we, you know, set across with them. And there are a bunch of services. One aspect of the service is the technology service to create the product so for that we get a certain percentage as and when we sell the gift cards we kind of set get a certain percentage and with the volume of sales we do we get higher percentage right. so overall blended if you look at it we are probably operating at about two percent currently mm -hmm. uh, across the you know all suite of services that we offer today mm -hmm. right and uh, and we've seen that actually and go as and you've hit uh, profitability in uh, recent times and that's about four quarters old that you've actually hit uh, net profitability so Absolutely. where do profits stand right now and what are the kind of uh, margins that you're working with, uh, what's the outlook to? So I think we have last four quarters consistently we have been clocking, uh, you know, and becoming uh, profitable. See, in our business today, uh, from our uh, gross margin to the the profitability today, the 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 we probably are looking at about getting to about sixty to seventy percent down the line at steady state. Right now we are not there. Mm -hmm. Okay, but at steady state we should get there. Uh, we have just turned profitable at this point in time, but I think we are confident of getting there, bringing in a lot more efficiencies into our whole game, and that is SaaS all about, right? right. Uh, globally, if you see, there are very few SaaS companies. Who truly turned profitable mm. so that way I think uh, we have done reasonably well but uh, Amazon is one of your uh, um, well the companies that is funding you and has uh, made sure that you've reached the level that you have reached right now so do tell me from the kind of uh, funding that you've been able to raise what's the total funding how much were you uh, planning to burn and how much did you actually Sure. So, uh, you know, normally, Vikram, we don't share the exact uh, funding amount that we have received. Uh, but generally, we have been extremely prudent in mm -hmm. terms of our spends. You know, our funding requirement over a period of time, we have actually, you know, kind of been operationally so efficient that, uh, you know, uh, our, our amount of funds that we have raised would have been significantly smaller than comparative companies in the space we are in. And uh, when I say that today we are profitable, I'm talking about being profitable, including our international spends that we are doing. Now we have set up a subsidiary in Singapore, we have a branch office in Dubai, you know, we have costs associated with Which it. Which is also a little surprising because yeah. right now the Indian market is so underpenetrated, like 2% uh, compared to uh, any other advanced market. So uh, obviously the possibilities do stand here and uh, there is going to be that much more in the future as well. Absolutely. We are going to be watching very closely the gift uh, uh, card space obviously and the entire gifting concept how it's working digitally is a very interesting piece right now and uh, you're right there in the middle of all the action so good okay. luck going ahead thank you Vikram appreciate the time okay. such a pleasure having thank you, you on Rising Stars and with that it's going to be a wrap on this particular edition but of course there'll be plenty more entrepreneurs that we'll feature on the show in the future for the moment thanks for joining us bye bye